No worries. Uh, no worries. Maybe if you can try and resend the link for me again, so I can open a new email. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. This is Doriel Larrier of Lot Carey Women in Service Everywhere. And I'm glad to have you here on the digital couch. Uh, tonight, we are going to be chatting with the Nandos. Pastor Jacobus, welcome. I see you all in here. Well, uh, Pastor Jacobus and Reverend Erica Namdo of Teen Challenge in South Africa. And as would be the case, we are having a little bit of international technical snafus. So we uh, beg your support for the next few moments. Our plan A will be to try to connect and our plan B will be to record this and then send it to the streams that we have connected here. We actually did have connection about eight minutes ago and we're here trying to work it out. So I do thank you very much for your support to everyone who is watching. Uh, be advised that it this is 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but it is actually 1 a.m. Oh, we are here. Okay, it seems I'm there. Look at that. Um, that's right. Okay. Thank you. It Jesus. seems. How's the light? Is the light good? <laughs> the light is fine. The light is fine. Okay. 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 Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> yes. Good morning. Good uh, morning. That's I'm fine. Sorry. Good morning. evening. It's evening. Okay. Quite all okay. right. So officially, let us begin. Welcome. Amen. Say, Dumela Saubona. Good morning. Kuyumora. Yes. 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 Welcome. Saubona. Yes. Saubona. Welcome to the Lot Carry Wise Women in Service Everywhere Digital Couch. My name is Doriel and is Larrier, and I help out with Lot Carry and the Women in Service Everywhere. The team, the efforts, the programming uh, here on in in our pro, in our division, and I'm so blessed and honored to be able to be with you all tonight. Tonight it is still nighttime somewhere, and it is nighttime where the Namdos are. Yeah. Let me officially yeah. open up and say an official greeting from the Executive Secretary Treasurer Reverend Emmett Dunn, the President Gregory Jackson, the First Vice President Dr. Gina Stewart, the Second Vice President. Dr. Jesse Williams, and for Women in Service Everywhere, we have Dr. Angelita Clifton, who's the first vice, and the second vice is Dr. Brenda McVarrow. Under the guidance and the blessed love from above of our president, Rosette T. Graham, bless her soul. So I'm so thankful to everyone who has joined us tonight and thank the Lord for shining down upon us because a couple of minutes ago, we were sitting here waiting. Uh, on our digital couch tonight, we have Pastor Jacobus and Reverend Erica Namdo. Uh, let me just reintroduce everybody that our digital couch here is the opportunity for us. And please, wherever you are, please invite someone that you know should be here and is not here. But please uh, allow folks to know that we on the digital couch, we want to make sure that we chat with our, our mission partners and those who are integral to the lot carry work but we may not necessarily be able to get to them. And of course, in the past couple of months, we've been distanced because of a disastrous dilemma, but that does not keep us apart from using the internet and the technology that has been given to us to connect, to draw closer and to continue the work of God here in his vineyard. Yeah. So, Tonight, uh, this is our episode number four, episode four, and we are speaking again to Pastor Jacobus and Reverend Erica Namdo of Teen Challenge. So welcome, uh, welcome uh, Reverend Namdo, good to have you with us. 
man. Well, a very good evening wherever you are uh, listening from. Uh, good morning here in uh, South Africa or the continent of Africa. I am truly blessed to be here with you and uh, greetings in a wonderful, awesome name of Jesus, our Christ and Savior. We praise God for this great opportunity. He has afforded us to be with you uh, in this next uh, for this next few minutes. God bless you. Excellent. Excellent. Now, as a reminder, it is already 1 a.m. for the Namdo, so we're not going to yeah. keep them as long as we would keep other people. We're going to honor their time and uh, the fact that they need to rest. But we are so blessed and honored that they join us for tonight. So we're going to mm -hmm. have just a couple of questions and these general questions that we ask everyone on the digital couch as it pertains to Lot Carey and the mission work. First, give mm -hmm. us a, 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 a short snippet of the work that you do a lot carry or the work that you do in South Africa and how it helps the people on the ground. We know that you are the hands and the feet on the ground in South Africa going and serving the least of these. Please tell Amen. us how, how we help you help God do the work in South Africa. Amen. Amen. Well, um, first and foremost, uh, as I said earlier on, and I must apologize, my wife fell asleep. We just came from the road. We've been traveling uh, this last last few weeks, um, being out of country to Ghana, just arrived back in the country uh, Tuesday. And then same day we traveled to the Eastern Cape uh, to look at some opportunities for women and women and children facilities. So we just came back uh, to beat our curfew at about 11 o'clock. Uh, and so we just made it uh, just in time about uh, 10.30, we arrived in Cape Town, so she went to the bath, and then she actually fell asleep. Uh, and uh, so uh, I do not want to bother her because she's very tired uh, being on the road the whole day today, driving uh, from one state to the other uh, and to beat, um, to beat the curfew that we have. Nevertheless, we are thankful that I am here with you uh, this beautiful uh, day or morning. And uh, just to let, give an update, we are very, very thankful to God for Lord Carey and uh, also, of course, our partners in the USA, everybody who's been supporting us over the years and particularly this last year been extremely, extremely difficult. But through the grace of God, we were able to uh, feed at least, um, not at least 1,250,000 meals. We were able to, to provide cooked meals uh, over 1,250,000. And in addition to that, uh, we were also able to distribute over 2,250 food parcels for a family of six for seven days. Uh, and, uh, and we honor God that uh, that he had blessed us to do these things. But then, of course, uh, with the COVID-19, uh, the homelessness was a great concern for us uh, because people were just, uh, you know, wandering around in the streets and uh, not masking up and, uh, you know, comply to uh, COVID uh, rules and regulations. So we opened up our facilities and uh, for men and women on the street to come on into our facilities. And uh, through the grace of God, we uh, assisted over 280 persons uh, for, the next, for the last year who came into our program. And I can report that God has been oh, great sir. and, uh, you know, comply to, uh, and graciously kind towards us that uh, we were able to open up our facilities and help these men and women, uh, you know, not to become uh, super spreaders within our communities. And uh, we thank God for that. And that was all because we were uh, recipients of uh, the support from Lord Carey. And uh, we were blessed uh, by, you know, our monthly uh, support and uh, we continue to do that, and uh, even uh, to this day, sorry. amen, amen, even to this day, as I said, uh, we were able to go through and had our international conference in Ghana, uh, and the Lord continued to bless the work 
of our hands and uh, the Teen Challenge program right now as we sit, we have programs in 34 nations on the continent of Africa through the grace of God. And uh, we just want to honor the Lord for his goodness upon our lives. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, so yes, actually, you, I did see that you were in Ghana a couple of days ago. I was, I was following your work, and uh, I'll take a step back. Um, Teen Challenge, it spreading now, of course, uh, across the the continents. And I do hope that you, as God would give you strength, will continue to be able to share the word and the and the mission of Teen Challenge. Uh, I know I was introduced to Teen Challenge probably about four, maybe four decades ago and just heard and not really connected to the fact that there were the exorbitant amount of young people who really needed uh, an additional family, an yeah. additional yeah. level of arms to extend around them, to open uh, to yeah. open up in order to embrace them, whatever they are, the path that they chose was not going to be supported by their family. And so their family just yeah. said, well, in essence, not here. If you want to do that, just it won't be here. And so whether the, the young people, <clears throat> as you, I heard, and this is again, about four decades ago, I heard somebody talking about the story of, uh, you know, going into uh, like drug uh, worn territory and, and territory that had a lot of gang violence. And I just remember those key words popping into my head uh, that long time ago and saying, mm -hmm. well, in essence, who are these superheroes? Who, what, what is happening over there, like, over there, over there? And, and not until mm -hmm. I had a blessed opportunity to come uh, myself and uh, participate or come to the BWA the Baptist World Alliance in 2015. Yeah, I just had the opportunity to sort of be, you know, the same hands on hands and feet on the ground, and and to see myself, see for myself what the great work that you are doing, you and your wife and, and your team are doing, and then continuing to hear the story of how ominous this task is. That God definitely yeah. must have given you a very strong backbone in order to be able to do the oh, work. Praise God. Right. Praise God. Um, so you have some amazing numbers of the amount of people that you have served, the meals, the beds that you have. How large is your team that helps you do this work? Yeah, oh, thank you very much. Um, our team, we have um, 33 full-time staff uh, in, our in our different facilities. And in addition to that, we have um, about uh, right now about 40 to 45 volunteers that is volunteering uh, in all of our facilities across South Africa. Uh, and that is just South Africa. And then, of course, in all the other nations uh, that we have programs, we have um, in every nation, we have about um, a minimum of five to 10 staff in our programs. So uh, just South Africa, about 30, 33 full time and about 45 uh, temporary staff that is that that that's serving our program in uh, South Africa yes okay and the staff they are they're medical staff are they like social workers teachers crisis intervention just or just people that love God and just trying to be hands on hands on the ground for you yeah most of most of the people that's working for us um and uh even though we we desire to have, as we would call, professional staff. Um, financially, we are not in a position to really uh, um, afford professional staff. And therefore, we make use of people that has gone through the program. We train them. Um, as with the uh, training program we had in Ghana, so we have training institutes that we run where we train staff how to how to manage or how to administer uh, facilities like like what we have our residential facilities but then of course all of our professional staff if i may uh, we have uh, what we would call memorandum of agreements where we where we basically connect with facilities government institutions youth institutions 
and uh, they provide the professional services for us, whether it's social work or whether it's psych psychiatric or psych psychological intervention or medical intervention. We work with those institutions. Uh, and for uh, up until now, we've been very successful in doing that. And those partnerships stretch over uh, at least 20, 20, 25 years that we've been doing this work. Amen. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And I mean, every year that we hear, we hear the stories, you know, we're, I'm always excited to hear that the numbers are growing, that the people are, are getting, that they're getting the services and those people who work with rehabilitation or transitional communities know that the best staff are the people who have been staffed, right? Those people yes. who know, who yes. can speak the language, who know the right. hurts, who know the people who are about to slide back in. They know yes. how to grab them because they've been there. You know, they've been there. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> the And so the, the work that you're able to, so in essence, you're training the trainer. Correct. Good right, on. you're yes. training the training. Yes. You're bringing. You're you're taking in, polishing up. Yes, and then yes. putting back and out in order to shine. Right, put them back up to shine. Absolutely, absolutely. To, shine. to, to get absolutely. more to get more gems to continue yes. to shine them. Absolutely, absolutely. How how absolutely. Well, right? How welcoming are the other countries that you're trying to spread the word to? How welcoming are they? I mean, you're it's yourself and your and your wife, and I'm sure you have a team. But how you know how are you able to spread yourself like that in order to get more countries to buy in, or do they watch you and they're like, oh, I have to learn how you do this. Let me come mm -hmm. to South Africa. Let me come yeah. in and see what it is that you're doing. Like, how are you spreading that word? Yeah. Well, um, yes, uh, there is great look. Um, to just give the viewers uh, understanding of what we're dealing with on the continent of Africa throughout, you know, right from the, the south, um, right up north, we have over, in fact, 40,242,116 people, you know, under the age of uh, 35 that is trapped in addiction right now as we speak. And uh, so, so in every country, we find there's a desperate need. Uh, there are countries that I, uh, in fact, I may, I cannot even mention them. They are high risk countries, but uh, we, the Lord has uh, enabled us to go through some of those northern region countries where there's great conflict right now. But we, we we've been able to establish in those nations. So there are many nations who came out and who asked us to come uh, and to establish programs in there. As I said earlier on, right now we are in 34 countries uh, established in 34 countries. Could have been uh, about 37 right now if it was not for COVID. There were three country, three or four countries that I was supposed to visit in 2020, uh, but we were unable through to COVID-19. Uh, we were unable to visit those nations. But as the countries opened, uh, we believe that we will be able to yes to go and visit and uh, establish butter. On your question, how open? I think there are great need in every country now. For example, uh, I've been to Ghana uh, just recently. Just uh, um, came back in um, on Tuesday morning. Uh, came back from Ghana, and uh, we had one of the regional ministers who spoke at our conference at the, at the welcoming uh, in welcoming welcoming us, and uh, he basically asked us, begged us to come and uh, really to extend the scope of our work uh, in Ghana. So uh, we want to praise God for this great grace that he has bestowed upon us as many nations open around the continent of Africa uh, to establish these, these programs. Thank you. Excellent. You can still hear me, Thank correct? You. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. I just wanted you to be the center of attention as long as you can hear oh, me. 
Good. Okay. 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 <laughs> That's great. Um, now I guess I'll just wrap up because I, I want you to get your rest. Uh, no, no. That's so as the as the world continues to to reopen uh, and yeah. you connect with the governmental agencies to yeah. continue yeah. to support the work when the young people, because it is teen challenge, yeah. what age do they age out and how what services do you funnel them into? Like, how do you prep them? If Like, do they age out at 18, at 21? And how how do you send them off? What how does the yeah. government help you connect them with work, with housing, with uh, you know, if it's childcare? How how does the government yeah. help you move them on to the next step? Yeah, well, that is a very very good question. Um, well, even though the name is Teen Challenge, we not we don't necessarily work with teenagers only. We also have adults in our program uh, right now. But um, uh, on the question, how do uh, government agencies help us? We don't we don't really get support from uh, government agencies at this point in time. Uh, however, we looking forward to engage with or we continue to engage with government. But um, the Lord has blessed us. We have um, established a what you would call a community college uh, through our efforts here in Cape Town. And uh, through the college, we uh, help people to get into the college, acquire a uh, uh, accredited qualifications, whether it be for computers, uh, or agriculture or business, or even an artisan. So we're placing them uh, in the reintegration phase. And uh, once in the re reintegration phase, we then also provide for them, uh, you know, to go to the college and, uh, and acquire a qualification. Um, uh, at this point in time, the Lord had been kind towards us and I can, I only can, you know, honor the Lord for, uh, Lord Terry, and then also I must make mention of, uh, you know, uh, our church that we have a great partnership with, the Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church under the yeah. leadership of uh, Reverend Dr. Alan Iwala uh, and the leadership of the Enon Church. We have a great partnership and they um, have been supportive of this ministry tremendously. And, uh, you know, we've been blessed to expand and do all of these things in particular the, the college uh, piece of it and also the church portion of it and therefore you know uh, these partnerships it help us to really uh, see the impact of the work of uh, the of the church within our communities if I may I know that you want to release me uh, but if I may oh. want to I, I just yeah you can stay as long as you'd like. I just wanted you to get some rest. That's fine. <laughs> uh, I know. I know. I just want to I just want to uh let our listeners know that the Lord has enabled me to write a new program. Uh and many many of our viewers might remember we've been focusing on residential rehabilitation uh services for men and women. Uh, but over the last years, if, uh, in particularly as I've been traveling uh, to many of these uh, African nations and look at the disparities of our people and the great need to provide services for people trapped in addiction, I realized that um, the services that we provide is not sufficient. And also we do not have capacity, uh, you know, to provide services for everybody. And so uh, over the last few years, I've started to write uh, on a program like a community based rehabilitation and uh, uh, you know, in particularly as to how we can engage the church and, uh, you know, within community and uh, how we can mobilize the church to really provide a service wherever the church are placed within the earth. And uh, the Lord had been kind to us, I've, uh, completed a, a small training program uh, for the church to train uh, church folk how to deal with uh, people that is dependent on substances 
and how we can assist people to get out and facilitate life transformation because it's not everybody that is using substances that need, as I would call it, the ICU. There are people who just need, you know, a, uh, a physician, as people that just need a community uh, uh, based, uh, what I would call a community based uh, health facility or a or a hospital. It's not everybody that would need the ICU. We want to focus on I ICU and help the church to become the hospital where people can go to and be served with, uh, you know, uh, uh, through the gifts that we have in the church. And so that program had been run very successfully in South Africa. We piloted the program. We've, uh, firstly, we've trained uh, many people within our church and other churches around in South Africa. And uh, then we've piloted uh, that program and the Lord has blessed us tremendously. Uh, and uh, through the grace of God, many churches bought into the program and now we're rolling the program out. It is, it is, it is um, done under a program called the Hope Revolution. And the Hope Revolution is simply if somebody cannot find hope, hope must find them. Hope must locate them. Because when hope locate people, wherever they are, they find a strength to rise, reason to live, and meaning to life. And that is what we want to do. That is what we want to extend to our people. And who best can be effective in this in this fight against addiction than the church? I believe we can play a significant, significant role in fighting addiction. And uh, we've seen that now. And the Lord had been kind towards us to have so many churches on board and uh, help people. And then through that program, you automatically have an extension of your rehabilitation or your residential programs uh, that would provide, as we would call it, aftercare services to those that would leave uh, the residential programs and go back to community. And if there is a hope revolution program within community, then they will have uh, the extension of a residential program and they will automatically be part of a uh, uh, aftercare program that will provide these services within a that particular community. So we are hopeful and uh, very excited to see many more churches joining us in the Hope Revolution and establish community-based program within communities. Uh, and we're very excited about that. Thank you. That is phenomenal. So I I hope that you will, no pun intended, I, I do pray, let me say that, I pray that you will give us the title of this book so that we can help, you know, spread the word for you. Uh, okay. If, if actually, can you just, Tell us the name, the exact name of the book right now so that we can have okay. somebody who's taking notes. I know people are taking notes to type yeah. the, the, the word in the, the phrase into the chat. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I will do that. Well, uh, Doriel, I have uh, authored one book. Uh, uh, one book, it is called No Mother Gave Birth to a Drug Addict. No yeah. Mother gave birth to a drug addict. Uh, my strong conviction is that mothers uh, gave birth to sons and daughters. Yes. And if we, if we as a people look to somebody and we don't see a drug addict, but see sons and daughters, uh, the battle had been won uh, significantly because we have to, we, we have to change the narrative of the story of addiction. And one way of changing it is to, look at people the way God created people in his image. And then, of course, uh, in addition to the no mother gave birth to a drug addict, uh, there, are, there are tips in there that I wrote about my experiences of the last 20, 25 years. Uh, there's a lot of tips in there, how parents can deal with their children when they have succumbed to addiction. And uh, mostly I'm talking up on uh, prevention preventative strategies in the in that book but then the training manual the training manual that that I've put together for the church 
Yes. Uh, I think that's the one that you're referring to. Yes, the sir. training manual, it is simply called The Hope Revolution. The Got Hope it. Revolution. And then a subtitle to that is Bringing Home Our Sons and Our Daughters. Bringing Home Our Sons and Our Daughters. And that is a training manual for churches, uh, for educators, uh, you know, and just basic community workers. And uh, I talk about prevention early intervention i gave you know some tips on uh, a drug education talk about the different kinds of substances that's being used across the globe and then uh, uh, talk about developmental phases of addiction and to see where we as the church can fit in and really play a significant role talking about uh, peer pressure what it is and uh, and and basic communication uh, ways of communicating you know to people that has fallen victim to addiction how do you communicate to somebody like that and uh, then of course in there is uh, for churches there's an implementation plan uh, basically a 12 step implementation plan if churches plan to be part of you know the solution then i gave some tips as to how to develop an a plan that churches can implement within community to establish a program like that within your church. That is phenomenal, phenomenal. Okay, I'm gonna join you back in the chat. I'm gonna ask you, uh, Pastor Namdil, do me a favor, yes. slide a little bit to the right. Okay. A little bit more. Okay. Because when I join you, I'm gonna split the screen. There we go, stay right there. Okay. Is that good? <laughs> That'll okay. be good. Okay. Let's yeah. try to join you here. There we go. Yeah, I see you. Okay. Now we're good. both in the in the sense. Good. good. So yes, we this are. is this has been phenomenal. So we have no mother gave birth to a drug addict and the hope revolution. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type those two uh, titles and find yes. URLs for them and put them okay. into the chat so that when people okay. do review this text, if no one I have seen so far, type those titles into the chat <clears throat> to tag those. Um, and I'm okay. also very, just want to acknowledge the uh, Enon Western Cape and then Enon here in the United States and to Pastor Alan Waller, who's definitely been uh, a great support. I've heard the work that they are doing um, here similarly to the work that you're doing uh, in in uh, in the Western Cape. And just one final, not necessarily a question, but it's just an observation. So you said that the guide that you have developed are for churches to implement a similar rehabilitation, uh, you know, drug treatment or community-based, what we in the States know as a CBO, same thing, community-based organization to come alongside you know, the, the, the institution in order to support them to, to not only bring in, but to shore up and to strengthen, to be the backbone, yep. the sinews, the muscles, excuse me, um, for this. Sorry about that. Excuse me. Mm. Pardon. And in that light, not every church is cut out to do that work. Yeah. Not every yeah. church is cut out to do that work. There are some churches that have that have the people who are who are not only hungry to serve those that clientele, but who also have whether or not, and it doesn't, and I recognize it doesn't have to be people who have walked that walk, but right. it definitely has to be people who have that heart and who are not afraid to step out. Yeah. and step into the communities because yeah. when i heard and i literally i heard this i don't uh, you can tell me you can remind me the exact year that you remember starting with like carrie but i just remember hearing your voice and your name for many 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 years yeah. um but i remember hearing you tell a story about going into 
areas where there was gun violence and areas where there were people and just like, I heard you say one time, like just snatching young people off the street and saying, come on, we're going to take you. We're going to help you. We're going to, you know, support you. And however Mm -hmm. it is that I heard that story that stuck, like it just stuck in the back of my head, but not everybody has that heart. Not everybody has Mm -hmm. that fearlessness Mm -hmm. right to Mm -hmm. go. And so I'm, I'm sure the other people who are listening on our many platforms, uh, if they do know about you, they're just like, I'm so glad to hear your voice one more time. I'm glad to see awesome. you continue to do the work one more day. I'm continue, you. you know, just glad to hear the the that the beds are growing, right? Unfortunately, the yeah. beds are growing. Like, unfortunately, we need yes. more beds, but it is yeah. fortunate that there are beds that can be had. Yeah. So, can Absolutely. be developed and that there are volunteers. I mean, just hearing the the number, um, he said 1.1 million, 250,000 meals, like th- that's ominous. But then again, you're mm-hmm. serving such a great population in terms of number. Um, I'm very mm-hmm. glad and excited. And we at La Carrie, of course, are excited that the, the amount of people are being served. And of course, not only right. being served, but are being prayed for and are, are yeah. Not just we help you today and then we send you out tomorrow, but we help mm-hmm. you today. We shore you up. And we're also, as you said, sending them to uh, a local either technical school or artisan yeah. training or some sort of an educational supplement so that they can move on their own when the time is right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yes. And so just as we sort of try to close, because I definitely want you to go to sleep, but if you want to keep talking, that's fine. (laughs) (laughs) So how, yeah, yeah, the last thought is how can we, and I say we, and I, I am in the States, I'm, I'm in, uh, I'm in the United States, but how can we start to open up people's mind? And when I say people, I mean young people, because right now you, you of course are growing down. Like you are, you've developed this train the trainer program, right? You're you're training right. churches to continue to do the work. You're training churches right. to be to, to stretch out and duplicate the model that you have set out. We yes. have young people who are not just over there, but are over here who have right. that mission mind, you know, and yeah. so just to try to continue to plant seeds in the minds of young people, and I'm thinking of Peace Corps. Yeah, yeah. But Peace Corps, you know, I'm talking about driving young people who have a mind for missions who may, because there's some out there, who may want to come over and say, hey, I just finished college or I'm in college and I'd like to do an internship or an exchange or something like that. If there are some. Hopefully there are some that have a heart to do the work that you do or to help and do the work that you do. And so I'm I'm also I asked the question about the professional training because there might be students right across the country yeah. who yeah. may yeah. be studying uh, psychology, who may be studying, Correct. you know, sociology, who may be studying uh, African society, who may be studying, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So just to continue to spread that word so that if there are young people listening or the families of young people who are interested in missions, who are interested in social work, social service, just whatever, that there's a possibility that they can extend their thinking, their time, their talent, their tithe across the borders to help you That's what I'm trying to plan. That's what I'm trying to plan. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that is um, something that we would welcome with open arms. Uh, it is to invite people, you know, from across borders to come to come here uh, into a training program for at least, um, you know, if we do this program for at least se- uh, seven to 14 days, uh, because we don't, we don't just, we don't want to just do the theory. We also want to do practical work so that people can see. Of, um, uh, in fact, I had a very interesting uh, conversation with somebody at the conference uh, who, who basically spoke about, you know, the whole issue of being. You know, you know, being cut out for this kind of ministry, and maybe some of the viewers who doesn't know me, 
you know, I've never used uh, substances in my life. I've never been part of gangs. Uh, I came from corporate South Africa into this field of work. Uh, so I didn't know, I didn't know anything about, about this work, but I think uh, and believe, you know, apart from believing that God called me for this, I believe it was born out of the need, out of the crisis that we had at that point in time in the country, that the urge and the compassion, and, and this was the discussion we had, somebody said, well, uh, it's not everybody that has the compassion to or passion to do this. And I said, well, that is true. Sometimes you don't need to have the passion for something like this until you encounter a situation. And I spoke about, and maybe for some people that was a little bit out of context, but uh, I said to somebody, it's like the Good Samaritan. He had no intention to help somebody. He had no intention that there would have been somebody on his road uh, as he was traveling. It was when he encountered that situation that he felt compassion. And he made a choice. He made a choice. That he made he made a choice. Stop you understand. The help. But but it was activated by somebody, by a condition of somebody. Sometimes when we, you know, when when we find ourselves in front of a condition of somebody else, the passion that's already there, everybody, and in particularly, you know, Africans, African Americans, in particular us. We, you know, I always, I always talk about this. There are two things that we have. It is our spirituality and our humanity. It's always there. And so when you, when you engage and, and you see something that, that humanity is immediately being triggered, you may not even have thought about something. But if you see something, if you see the injustice, uh, you may not have, you know, been bothered about it, but when you look at it, there's a trigger inside that just that just goes off, and you immediately engage in that, and then uh, you build on that. And I said, you don't have to have, you know, consciously the passion to do something, but when you see a daughter in a um, abusive uh, situation, you find a son somewhere and you have a son or a daughter, there is no way that you would not be, that you would not feel compassionate for somebody else's son. Right. If you understand the value of a son or a daughter, you know, there's no way that you would look at a situation and just turn the other way. Uh, to some extent, you will feel there's something that is talking to you inside. I said, sometimes compassion or passion are born or activated when you see a situation and not when you just walk through life. It is when you encounter. So don't, don't, don't always say, ah, it's not everybody that doesn't have the, it, when you encounter it or, uh, you know, we always pray that God will protect our children. But when it hits home, when it is in my house, you will feel that pain and you will feel, and when your son or daughter, you know, go through a program, you will always have that, you know, sense of compassion. But then it was triggered because you found yourself in a situation. If you would not have been there, it would not have the compassion would not have been there too. But when you when you when you are hit with this thing, you find you have a different tune, you have a different, you know, approach towards others. And so I'm just I just wanted to say, you know, we are opened. Uh we would really like people to come on and uh you know join us here and uh you will be tremendously blessed. Uh I will not even try and convince you when you put your feet, you know, on the soil and you engage, you will leave a different person altogether. Young people will leave. I've been to Ghana now. And uh, if you could see the energy amongst people, young people, 
that would go out and uh, just do things for God. It is amazing, amazing, amazing. So those listening, if you want to come and join us, uh, make up your groups, join us with five or ten for five, ten days. We go through the Hope Revolution training. We go to the streets. We do mediation with, in gangs. We talk about it. We go into the most, uh, uh, you know, violent places, the most uh, dangerous places. We walk those streets so you see what we're talking about. It is not just something we talk about. It's not something nice on a, on a presentation. But uh, we go into the streets. We take over homes uh, through the grace of God. We take over what you would call crack houses. We take over crack houses, help people to come out, close those houses, and turn it into houses of hope within community. Turn that into houses of hope. Uh, you know, and that is the witness of the church. That is why God has placed us in the earth, you know, to change the status quo. And uh, so I do not want to say much more until you get here and uh, you go through the training and, 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 and the rest will be history. Amen. I do. I am just bowled over. I'm bowled over. You know, I've uh, let me just make a statement. Oh, so there are some people who've made some comments. Let me just read the comments. Okay. So uh, one comment says, Reverend Namdo, the work you are doing in Cape Town and in other countries is amazing. We will pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to lead you and open more doors for the various ministries. Thank you, and Sister Namdo. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, so another Thank person you. said, Thank God for the Hope Revolution Program and manual which supports your book, No Mother Gave Birth to a Drug Addict. Thank you very much. And another person wrote the comment. So this is what I need. When people hear something that resonates with them, type it in the chat. Right. We want to use right. that word as an inspiration back to the Namdos. So the next person said, a passion is born when you encounter a situation. Hey. We That's will be retweeting that. We will be reposting that because that is an essential statement from this chat. And uh, yeah, the last person said, thank God for how he uses you. God bless you. Amen. God Amen. bless you. God bless you. So, thank yeah, you. again, I'm going to uh, put the two texts, No Mother Gave Birth to a Drug Addict and the Hope Revolution in the chat. Uh, I know that you have so you are on social media. I know you're on yep. Facebook because I had to find you. I had to find you. <laughs> uh, and so I do hope that you will continue to, you can even sort of pay attention to our future broadcasts of the yep. Lot Carry Wise Digital Couch yep. because we are talking to the you. We are talking to our missional partners. We're talking to the yep. other inspirational uh, connect uh, connections that we have across the waters. We are reducing the, the global divide and making it just a little button away. That's what we're here to do. So we Amen. thank you so much for your time. We do understand, again, it is 1 a.m. for you. And we're just so blessed. Yeah. But God woke you up. Amen. Amen. And Amen. You're not even going to go to sleep um, after this because now you're on a high. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 won't be, I won't be able to sleep now <laughs> because I'm so blessed. Amen. I'm so very, very blessed. Amen. To connect with our Lord Kerry family. Uh, whoever is locked in, uh, I'm just blessed, tremendously blessed. Amen. Excellent. And so we're also going to do the best that we can to send uh, some more people at least to follow you and, and your page or, you know, uh, the work that you're doing uh, with Teen Challenge. And so if you have, I'll speak with you about just connecting the dots so that more of your information can be directly connected here on the social media platform for Lot Carry Wise to continue to pay attention to the great work that you're doing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stay right there. Amen. So, family, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know that some people are watching in the live room, and then some people will catch this on the replay. If you do see this on the replay, or you know that somebody needed to have sat on our digital couch tonight, please let them know to join us in Lot Carry Wise. And if you're watching on other platforms, please share this with your church, your ministers, uh, the mission team, or just those people who, who might be interested in supporting, participating, learning more. If your church is not a missionary Baptist church or a missionary 
uh, organization, then maybe they should think about it. You know, you know, the work that we do here in the States, of course, we have to take care of home. But once, as my pastor said, once you take care of home, then you can go out and you can take care of somebody else. And, you know, to a great extent Good. that we're, we're still here after this entire shutdown and we're starting to come back out. If we're still here, we are we have taken care of ourselves to an extent. And so if you have, yeah. again, time, tithe and talent, if you've already served your church, you've already served your community, you can have the opportunity. You may not be able to physically go, but we know right. in the mission right. world, we can also send. And you know what I mean by that. So once again, God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Jacobus Nando and your wife. You're welcome. Who's taking news right now. Please send our yeah. best to her. And I will say to everybody, now I learned this about 20 something years ago. Remind me if I'm saying it correctly. Chambagatle. Did I say it right? Oh. Humbagashle. Humbagashle. I did it right. I did it right. Yeah. For those yeah. of you who do not know, I said good evening. <laughs> good evening. Yes. Humbagashle. All well, right. Good evening, folks. We will see you okay. on the first Thursday of July. Okay. God bless you.